Hello Internet, welcome to Technical Interview Key Point Review. Today, in this episode, we're going to be talking about hash table. In case you don't know yet, hash table, this thing right here, is very important in interview process. Nine out of ten times, you will be using hash table in your technical interview. So, pay attention to a hash table, like know everything about it. All right, so that said, what is a hash table? Hash table essentially is a very fast way to store data, and you can look it up and insert new data or delete old data in extremely fast time. How fast is it? The time complexity of hash table, well, three aspects. For search, it's only 01, instant lookup. And for insertion, it's also 01, instant insert. And for deletion, it's also 01. But this one problem you have to know about hash table is the key problem right here. It's collision. It's collision. If you know how hash table are implemented, you probably know what I'm talking about. But let's look into that in depth. All right. So there are two ways to implement a hash table. The first way, let's say, that's it, where's my pen? All right, let's say the first way, let's say this is a array. In its core, what is hash table is, doesn't matter, you are storing an object, a string, whatever, a string is an object. So whatever you are storing, uh, it's gonna use a hash, function to turn your object into an integer. Hash function to turn your object into an integer. And that integer will be the index in this array. So if you have the same string, this string, let's assume it mapped to three, and you store it into the slot right here. And when you want to look it up, you get the same string and it hash to three and you just you just you just know where it is because array has O1 lookup time and that's how hash table work. But as I mentioned, the key problem here is collision. What do I mean by that is if you have a string one and a string two, they both map to three. And they gonna be attempt to put into the same slot, right? So how to remedy that? That's what I meant by two ways of implementation. The first implement way is you can put it to the next one, right? But the problem is, how do you know, say if you have, if you have a string X that maps right underneath, how do you know to stop? Like if you're, if you're looking for every string that mapped to three, you were looking for four here, right? You were looking for four here. And how do you know five does not map to three? Well, one way you can run your hash function again and see if sx mapped to three. Another way to implement this, and it's actually how the professor taught us, is to use a, a dummy ending. A something like a mark. Hey, it's the end of this. You know, it's the end of it. Make make more room. Um, then that can be that can be something like a no, or something you know a signature that indicates the streak is over. The next one is not mapped to three anymore. Find something else. All right. But there's another problem. Say if you have a array and you have string one, two, string 100, they all map to the same number. I mean, if you write hash function like that, you are writing a pretty bad hash function. But, but that's that, it's, it's still possible. If you have everything mapped to the same string and it's gonna overflow, this this array is not, it's not gonna hold a hundred item. How do you remedy that? Is to remedy this every time you do an insertion, you wanna check 
how many data points are in there. So in your data structure, you will have another integer that's probably called like a count or something that indicates how many, how many elements are there in this hash table. And choose a number, like choose a ratio. Something like my professor always say, golden ratio is perfect for this. Just do golden ratio, it'll be fine. Something like golden ratio, if data point is off the, the golden ratio or above the golden ratio of the whole length of the array, double the size of the array, you know, it goes beyond. Double the size of the array, so it's not going to coll collide. Um, this is the first way to implement this. The second way, second way probably is uh, much more easier to comprehend is if you have something that map to the same slot, say the slot, right? You want to put a linked list attached to it. So every slot in here is a linked list. So if you have string one mapped to the same slot, string two mapped to the same slot, string three mapped to the same slot, you just put a linked list there. So every time you look for it, you get to that slot and you look for your element in a linked list. Easy enough, but what's the runtime on that? What's the worst runtime that can happen? It's O N, right? If you if everything you map to that's gonna hash to the same slot here over and over again, you are just gonna get a standard linked list. And how long does it does it take does it take to find the element in linked list? It's O N. So it's not ideal. Is there a better way we can implement this? Yes, there is. If you heard a binary search tree, better yet, a balanced binary search tree, you know that we can put a balanced binary search tree in here. And that's, what, I mean, you can implement this with any data structure you prefer, like a red black tree or something like that. If you implement this in a binary search tree, even if everything mapped to the same slot, you can find it in login time, right? So that's the two sub ways, sub ways of the second way of implementing hash tables. And of course, I prefer this one. You need to remember all of these time complexes. So let's let's review real quick. A hash table, a hash table, which is very very important. The runtime on it, on average, or you know, best case scenario, but on average, on all the good implementation, the runtime is O1 for insertion for deletion and for lookup uh, search but if you write very bad code if you write a very bad hash function a very bad implement implementation it's gonna take you all in time worst worst case all in time to find to insert delete and search. And just remember, hash table, hash table is really, really, really highly and highly likely will be in your technical interview. So there are a lot of ways I recommend you to go ahead and actually implement a hash table in your in your preferred language and see how it works and you know get a very good understanding of what's really happening in there and know everything in case the interviewer ask ask you about anything of the implementation of a hash table so that's it for this episode i'm gonna make another video talking about the difference between hash table and a hash set and hash map and if you're interested please subscribe to the channel you know and hit the like button so we're going to be talking in the future. All right, I'm going to see you next time.